The formula for the Nyquist frequency is, let's call it FNQ, equal to F0, our sampling frequency, over 2. The Nyquist frequency is the highest frequency we can possibly hope to observe in our data. To illustrate this, let's consider a true EEG signal that consists of a very simple time series, a pure sinusoid that oscillates at some frequency, call it F sub S. Of course, we never observe the true signal. Instead, we observe a sampling of this signal, which depends on our sampling interval. Let's define that as delta. We'll consider three cases for different values of delta. In the first case, we purchase a very expensive piece of equipment that can sample the true signal at a high rate. Said another way, our sampling frequency, F0, is much, much greater than the frequency of our underlying sinusoid. In this case, we observe the true brain signal with many samples. And, Given these samples, we can accurately reconstruct the underlying data. Now consider the case in which we purchase a cheaper piece of equipment that samples at a maximum rate equivalent to twice the frequency of the pure sinusoid. Said mathematically, F0 in this case is twice the frequency, Fs, of our underlying signal. In this case, we might collect sufficient samples to cover the underlying signal and approximate the oscillation frequency. To do so, consider the case in which the first sample resides on a peak of our underlying sinusoid, the next sample on a trough, and so on. Notice that, in this case, we collect two samples per cycle of the underlying true signal. Given only these sample points, we can connect the dots and still approximate the frequency of the underlying sinusoid. Finally, let's consider the case where our equipment records at a sampling rate less than twice the frequency of the underlying pure sinusoid. Mathematically, we'll set F0 less than two times the frequency of our sinusoid, and let's consider the samples that could occur. Let's assume that the first sample occurs at a peak of the sinusoid. The next sample will then not occur at a trough of the sinusoid. To do so would correspond to a sampling rate of F0 equals twice the frequency of the underlying sinusoid. But instead, the sample will occur just after the trough. Connecting these samples with lines in this case produces something that's horrifying, an oscillation occurring at a different, lower frequency. Notice what has happened in this case. Sampling the sinusoid at too low a frequency causes the signal to manifest at a low frequency upon sampling. In this case, we sampled at less than twice the frequency of our underlying sinusoid. This phenomenon of a high-frequency signal appearing as a low-frequency signal upon sampling is known as aliasing. Once the signal has been aliased, it's impossible to distinguish from true signals oscillating at low frequencies. This example illustrates an important point. To avoid aliasing, let's sample our data at sufficiently high rates. To prevent aliasing in practice, one method might be to pass the data through an analog filter before digital sampling occurs. In this case, for the EEG data of interest to us, we are told that the data were first analog filtered at 200 Hz before digital sampling occurred at 1000 Hz. So, for these EEG data, aliasing is not a concern.